wow, Phil's a scammer. He's a piece of sh underhanded shit. He's been lying to his viewers and fans for so long. Every time Phil says that he needs money, he's scamming them. Over the course of 2019, Philip Burnell has made many mistakes and has many different occasions that could be notable. And right now we are going to start our list at number 10. And that is Etika's passing and how Darkseid Phil, the king of suffering, handled it. My man's Etika is dead. My nigga is dead. I have to sit here and read fucking rest in peace Etika tweets just like the rest of y'all knowing that my fucking friend is gone and this shit is real. SJ to be five dollars. Uh, let's see here. SJ says I watched Etika for a long time. I'm really sad about what happened. Did you ever come close to being mentally unstable from all the trolling and hate that you get? Um, I hope you're doing well and please talk to someone if things get too hectic. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. There's times when it really does get to me when things go really bad because of it, um, or when I just want to express something genuinely, you know, that's something positive. And these idiots have to literally turn it into something negative and, and just say, oh, see, nothing, Phil could never ever genuinely do anything good or never ever genuinely have a good, a positive feeling about anything because in the past, here's five things he did wrong. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? I do this all the time. They did it on my tweet. I made a tweet about Etika just basically saying what I just said, okay? And oh, Look, in the past, Phil has referenced mental illness, and in the past, Phil has done this horrible thing and that horrible thing. How dare he make a tweet about something like this? Fuck off. An endless loop of, uh, loop, uh, loop of stress. And listen, by no means am I saying that my life is any, any harder or easier than yours or whatever. Listen, I'm just saying from my own perspective, I'm just venting a little bit here because I know many people wonder, gee, what kind of stuff happened that Phil... Uh, you know, wasn't here earlier today. All he does is sit here and play video games all day. You're right. I mean, that is my job. It's just not a very healthy job. I'll be honest. You know, it was a lot healthier when I had someone to share this with and to make me healthy meals and everything. And all that's gone now, and now it's a lot tougher. Of course, now we got to get someone in the stream chat who wants to turn their own personal uh, story into, you know, derailing the chat. And I'm not going to put up with it. So I'm just going to warn you right now. You know, War Dog Leader, there's no way for us to know. If what you're saying in the stream chat is legitimate or not, you could be someone completely making stuff up or you could be completely legitimate. Appreciate the sentiment and sorry to hear about a family member that passed away, but no one wants to hear you make this about how I'm in the wrong for being stressed in my life because you have a situation that's worse. Um, that's ridiculous. Go run your own stream if you want to do that. We don't, you know what I mean? Like he's trying to make me look like a villain because he says someone passed away and he's doing better than me. Wow. Well, good for you. Maybe you're a stronger human than me then. Maybe you're a better person than me. Good for you. Go run your own stream and everyone could go watch it. This is my stream. People want to know why I wasn't here. And I'm being honest. Fuck off. Seriously, that's what I mean. These people, they just want to bring you down. Here's a tweet about a guy who apparently was so mentally disturbed by people fucking with him that he committed suicide. So let's now attack the guy making the tweet. But the tweet's about someone who committed suicide because they were attacked. So let's attack the guy making the tweet. The problem with this situation was that DSP ended up turning a terrible situation about a young man killing himself into his own victimization from trolls who were mad at him for talking about his depression once again. 
and the following day during his morning pre stream he had this to say i'm human and things get to me all right they do and the bottom line is that you know yesterday we had a really really awful situation with the passing of uh you know a, a youtube gaming creator etika and I didn't know the guy. I personally know much about him all besides that, you know, he's into Nintendo stuff, I guess. And the thing is, I could have easily just never mentioned it at all. I could have just said, oh, I'm not going to mention it at all on my stream, just ignore it. And here's what would have happened, because this was a big news, current event, obviously pertinent to me being that I've been a content creator of gaming for 11 years. People would have undoubtedly asked me about it, people would undoubtedly gonna constantly bring it up on my streams, all right? And for me not to address it would be stupid, because all that happened by not addressing it, it makes it more of a hot topic. You know what I mean? Oh, you know, did Phil address the editor thing? Yes, he did. You can go watch the stream if you want to hear it. Okay. Versus, did Phil address the editor thing? No, I don't know why. He's like, he's ignoring it. He's like, he's not talking about it. He's weird. Let's keep bringing it up and see if he talks about it, right? See? That's the difference. I know this is the case because I've done this for 11 years. I streamed full time for two and a half. I streamed for a long time before that, which is 2013. I know how it works on streams. I know what people want. When they want to get something to talk about, they'll get it talked about. They'll make a whole stream about it. Um, if need be. Uh, if it's a hot, if they consider it a hot topic, all right? So, the bottom line is, if I didn't bring it up at all, all right? It would have ended up becoming a, a, you know, the thing of the stream. It would have completely devoured the entire stream. Everyone would have been talking about it constantly. So it makes sense for me to address it. All right, it did. And the way I address it, I really feel like I did it in a mature fashion, basically saying I don't know much about this guy um, at all. It's a shame that we lost the content creator. It's an awful thing. And you know that's kind of how I addressed it. Now later on in the day, uh, I had an opportunity, obviously, to jump on Twitter and find out more about the situation, about the guy's mental health issues, and the fact that basically people have made light of his mental health issues for years. That he had kind of alluded to in his videos that things like joking about mental health and memes that are made about it and that can be very hurtful, even though on the surface they don't seem like that they eat away at you in the background. Um, a lot of things just kind of came to light on social media overnight. Or not overnight, but during the course of the day, I should say. All right. And so during the day, you know, I made a social media post about it, basically saying, you know, the rest of these edits, I didn't know the guy, but, you know, memes can be very hurtful if used in, in a bad way, and people need to be responsible for the things that they say and do. You know, the problem with the internet today is that it's anonymous, everyone thinks you get away with anything, and that's all jokes. In reality, it's not all jokes. It hurts you constantly, it hurts fucking people with the things you say and do, especially if it's things that aren't true, but you want to try to make them seem true for, for you know, joking purposes. Har, har, har. Oh, yeah, it's all, it's all jokes, right? But, sadly, as you guys know, there's sad, there's just people on the internet who are just p complete and utter fucking shitheads who want to talk shit about me no matter what. So they took this opportunity to make it all about me, which is hilarious because they're, one of their criticisms of me is that I made it all about me. In reality, they made it all about me, okay? First of all, they tried to say that I was monetizing Etika's passing, that the only reason that I even brought this up is because I wanted to make extra money on my pre-stream video yesterday, okay? This is how ludicrous this fucking statement is, okay? Eternity later. I'm trying to make big bucks on this. Obviously, this is my intent. Was the only reason I talked about it was to make money, right? It's This is just insanity that this would even be something someone would consider as, as a consideration of something, you know, that happened. Are you that fucking dumb? Um, the, the, the statement that, you know, oh, Phil purposely talk about this subject on pre-stream so he could monetize Etika's death and make money on it is insanely illogical and ludicrous. In addition to all of that, which is, the, here's the kicker, I never monetized the video. <laughs> so that was a fucking lie. So on top of all the ludicrous shit that people are saying, I never even monetized it. The, the video was literally never monetized. Uh, on YouTube because I knew this was going to be uh, a subject. The lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> you know, that was going to be a very hot topic and that needed to be touched with very delicate uh, handling, you know. And I never did monetize the video anyway. <laughs> the video would never, I never placed ads on it. Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and HypnosisDownloads.com. And welcome to How to Stop Compulsive Lying. And you could, I actually, uh, in, in reality, I never even refreshed my YouTube dashboard overnight. So my YouTube dashboard from when I uploaded the video, I, I kept that. And this morning I screen captured it and I posted it on Twitter. I was like, how can you say I, I monetized someone's death when I never monetized the video to begin with? Oh, come on! But apparently... They, uh, you know, these people were, you know, again, my detractors, my haters, these, these fucked up people, whatever you want to say, are trying to say that there were ads all over the video. See, look at all these ads all over the video. I'm like, dude, I never monetized the video. Why the fuck you lying? I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Why you always lying? But the fact of the matter is, people are slandering me saying, oh, look at this. Phil's making money on, on, on this thing. In reality, I never did that. That's completely false, and that pisses me off that now people will believe that because they're so gullible and so fucking brain-dead stupid. They just believe what they're told without any substantiation, all right? It's just completely dumb, all right? That's number one. 
Number two, the other thing. Oh, Phil just made it about himself. Are you? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but DSP seemed to have actually made it all about himself once again. And he monetized that situation. And it was in poor taste. But to continue our list, here is number nine. The Cobra Strikes Back. DSP takes shots at Pro Jared. Three years ago, Pro Jared made this tweet and took a shot at Phil. And then Pro Jared's world fell apart. He went ahead and publicly announced that he was divorcing his wife. And, well, Phil Brunel struck like a cobra. Alright guys, so obviously in reality that's not what we're talking about, and obviously that's, uh, the truth of the matter is, the stuff that's been going on in the last 24 hours is not fun, it's not exciting, it's, you know, and it shouldn't be. Human drama never should be fun and exciting. And quite frankly, typically I usually will remove myself from any kind of human drama regarding other streamers and content creators. However, I think we need to, at least today on pre-stream, briefly address what's been going on with content creators in the last year, I'd say, where a lot of people who everyone thought were wholesome were, uh, you know, upstanding citizens, as you say, upstanding people and who had giant fan bases are now being kind of revealed to have some pretty nasty, malicious, underhanded stuff going on behind the scenes, and they're being exposed for it. Yeah, I'm an adult, sorry. I'm the one who operated a successful YouTube channel. Me. Me. I'm the one who puts out the content. And, you know, as someone who has been around the internet for 11 years doing content creation, and someone who's done it for a living since 2011, and basically for the last seven years has been the butt of... Pretty much the running internet joke meme as the worst content creator and a guy who's a joke and, you know, it's fun to make fun of Phil, har har har, and sadly, you know, someone who has been very negatively affected by it. For me, at least, to see all this stuff happen the way it's, it's been unfolding. Get on with it. Uh, before, you know, before you move on to other stuff, because I know a lot of people today may just be checking out a stream or two of mine because of the drama that's been going on on the internet and me, me voicing it on Twitter and getting over 10,000 uh, likes on, on a tweet within, you know, a short period of time. Before we get on to the daily drama of everything, okay? Now let's very briefly talk about the daily drama. Let's get it out of there, because I know some people are like, man, I come to Phil's streams just to hang out and chill and, and have game play and interaction during the gameplay. I don't want Phil to do a four-hour pre-stream today where he talks and, uh, you know, doesn't ever get to the game. You're a fucking idiot. This needs to stop. But what we're finding now in this modern day and age is that you can't get away with anything. Okay, you can't. When you are a content creator on the internet, your life is public. It doesn't matter how much you try to hide or keep behind the scenes. If you do something wrong, you're going to get caught and you're going to get called out for it. It's just going to happen. Okay? And I've been destroyed for it in a lot of ways. You remember three years ago, guys. A little over three years ago at this point. I had an unfortunate incident on stream. Welcome. Oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. Hello. Stream, uh, where the webcam was left on inadvertently. And even though, thank goodness, um, I don't have any kind of a setup where you can see much but my face, and the, the mic was muted, it was insanely embarrassing. And this became a huge internet meme across the entire internet. I became the laughing stock of the internet, as if I wasn't bad enough that I wasn't, you know... A laughing stock. I definitely became a laughing stock at that point. All right, and it's a shame that you've got people now who are failing because of cheating on their significant others or scamming people behind the scenes. So I made this one post. I made this one post, and you know it got some some traction. The thing is, my Twitter almost never gets any traction. Reason being is because there's people who hate me so much, and I told you guys, people who stalk me and hate me so much, they will literally find people who like my my tweets and stalk them. They're like, if you like what, so if anything Phil puts out there, we're going to come after you and we're going to harass you on social media and shit. So even though I have some like 23,000, well, I had 23,000. I think at this point I might have like 25,000 because I got so many new Twitter followers in the last like 12 hours. But, you know, I had like 23,000 Twitter followers. But in reality, when I tweet, 400,000 people see my tweets. That's not an exaggeration. I actually used a couple analyzation 
uh, programs and things to figure out how popular actually is my Twitter account. Even though it says only 23,000 people follow me, I get like over 400,000 impressions on every fucking tweet I put out. Even though no one likes or retweets them, I, like tons of people see my tweets. Okay? So, I put out this tweet and it didn't really get a lot of traction. I think it maybe got between like 100 to 200 likes or something like that on Twitter. All right. So later in the day, I come home and finally, you know, it's I, I had a busy day out with my wife. I come home and now it's time to relax. I'm unwinding. I open up Twitter again and people have contacted me and they're like, man, you know, you did you really see the open the whole situation or whatever? And one person in particular says, Phil, you do realize that this per this person who is, his life has fallen apart in the last 24 hours for infidelity, cheating on his wife, and a million other things going on behind the scenes. You do realize this person three years ago shitposted you for absolutely no fucking reason to get a laugh. This person shows me this tweet, and I'm like, man, so behind the scenes, this guy was a complete scumbag, right? All these horrible things that are coming out that this guy had actually done. And this guy had the fucking audacity. He was so fucking full of himself. Being at the top of the world, having a million YouTube subs, making tons of money hand over fist on his fucking YouTube channels. And this motherfucker went out of his way to piss on me. I said, guess what? I think it's finally time that DSP bites back. I directly quoted his tweet and I said, took a day off from the entire internet, but pro Jared hilarity was at the top of everyone's Twitter feed. Ha <laughs> ha, whoops. And uh, as of now, that tweet now has over 4,000 likes, over 1,000 retweets. So after I did that, people were contacting me and saying, oh my god, like, did you actually wait three years to strike back at this guy? And in reality, no. In reality, I had forgotten completely about it. Like I said, this is a commonplace thing for me. But someone had tweeted me this and said, are you aware that this guy actually insulted you directly three years ago? I was like, no. Well, you know what? Fuck it. All right, so I did that. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I put out that tweet and people really seemed to like it. They're like, wow, this is funny. You know, it's funny that you're even, you're even getting, getting on this, right? Now's the time. <clears throat> so, I decided to make a new post. The post goes as follows. Pro tip for content creators. If you've done something worse than this, whether it's public or not yet, quit. And you're saying, what? Well, worse than what? I put the picture of my incident from three years ago. My embarrassing moment. I put it on the tweet. I said, because I'm still here, and you won't be. And good luck living with that. So, I put that post up, and, uh... As of now, it's got 11,100 uh, likes, over 3,000 retweets. Pretty major content creators like Boogie, um, as well as many others. It's not just him, but many other content creators saw this and not only liked it, but retweeted it. Boogie actually said it's his now his officially his favorite tweet ever. I really don't expect any kind of long-standing positive effect to come from this. As much as that would be amazing, and it could help me to kind of turn things around behind the scenes financially, because I am in a really bad rut right now, because of so much shit that's happened to me over the years, and it would really help me to get more attention on my streams and more contributions. Like I said, I don't expect anything, I really don't expect anything long term. This is just kind of a one time thing where this is a situation I had a chance to strike back on someone who was nasty to me three years ago, and it was the perfect timing, the perfect stab back, um, and you know, it is what it is, okay? Once he failed trying to gather new fans into his cult, DSP went about a debunking stream where he was going to debunk seven years of slander for us. And oh boy, was it ever so much fun. And it was also our number eight entry onto this list. Yeah. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Phil Burnell, a.k.a. Darkside Phil here. And I'm doing something very special tonight, something that was completely unplanned, something that's off the cuff, on the fly. The reason I'm doing this is because in the past couple of days, the internet at large has finally kind of turned an eye to me for the first time in a major way in a long time in an actual positive light had two pretty epic looking tweets that yes one of them was directly to him and one wasn't it was more indirect but two epic tweets that kind of went crazy on twitter one of which has like 6,000 likes one has like over 17,000 likes and major content creators including guys like hee hee productions and pewdiepie uh, amongst others have been like referencing me boogie said it was his favorite tweet ever a little longer and if they don't see that later. you know i basically take this opportunity to do something positive and 
kind of almost clear my name for the last seven years of slander that's been against me on YouTube in particular, but of course now it's all over the internet. I almost feel that, sadly, all right, that sadly, there's no, not going to be another opportunity to do it. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to be doing is going down a list. I actually have a list. And I got a dollar tip from Jack who says, what's your advice for trolls? Don't let the trolls get you down. Um, the advice for the trolls, I mean, move on at this point. Dawn of when I really had my highest popularity um, on YouTube, all right, I was an asshole. Because I don't want to, my, my entire existence on the internet to be defending myself against people who are just saying ridiculous stuff. So I usually just hold back and never say anything. But tonight is the exception where I'm striking back Ladies and gentlemen, all right, the one thing that I want to say is off limits here tonight, this is the very truth, is things that are private information about other people that I can't reveal. So the first thing we're going to start with, Styles K did 100 bit cheer, by the way. Thank you very much, Styles K. Uh, the first thing I want to start with, all right, is looking at a long, long, long time ago. Back before I ever live streamed, back before I ever did any direct capture, way back when. All right. Um, I used to make racial joke, and you know what people will do over the years? They'll take clips out of context. They will defend Nintendo. Nintendo tomorrow, Iwata could come out and say, "Please understand. Fuck you. We don't like customer. Suck our big Japanese cocks." <laughs> All right. And they will. Put a clip out there, completely out of context of a playthrough, and make one little, this is one joke Phil made in 2010, look at what a horrible racist he is, right? right ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest, and I will admit this to this, now I will publicly say this, one of the biggest mistakes that I actually feel that I made in my early career as a content creator, is that I was making Nazi jokes, alright? They're not funny, I now I know that, um, but what ended up happening was I put out that video that Dead Space 2 demo video with that kind of jokes and commentary in it. And what happened was my trolls, which I've always had trolls. Even back then when I was white hot popular, I had trolls. My trolls staged a campaign, which they later admitted publicly was a fake campaign. This is what happens when you let the Jews do whatever they want. <laughs> You've let the Jews overrun space, and now look at this. Their greed has had the artifact turn everyone into necromorphs. They mass emailed Blip TV, pretending to be hundreds of upset people, saying, how dare you have someone on your site who's making this kind of comedy and kind of, co kind of commentary and stuff like that. Um, okay, and it sucks because, you know, they got, they got me, you know? Blip TV management saw these hundreds of complaints. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. They watched the video. They're like, okay, get rid of them. And they kicked me off the site. Ladies and gentlemen, um, in 2012, I made public my relationship with a, a woman at that time who was my girlfriend. Okay. And she very much became a part of my content over a five-year span that I was involved with, with this woman. She went by Pandalee on the internet, that was her, her, her nickname or whatever. And there's always been lies and slander and complete horrific nonsense regarding my relationship with Pandalee, which is horseshit. And the thing is, it's in my past. I mean, I, we haven't been together in over two years. I now have a, a married to a beautiful, lovely woman named Kat, and my life is great. But the thing is, people to this day still fucking bring up this bullshit. So tonight, for the first time ever, I'm debunking this bullshit, all right? The first thing that everyone fucking says to me is that, Phil, you first met Panda Lee when she was underage. She was under the age of 18. When you first started talking to her, you were grooming her so that you would finally go out with her and all this shit. And all of that is complete and utter fucking bullshit nonsense false. The truth of the matter is that back then, this was a different era, all right? It really was. It was a different era of YouTube. Um... And back then, people used to use YouTube private messaging. I don't, no one even uses that anymore. Pre sending me a private message on YouTube. I, I haven't even looked at a YouTube private message in a great bread of card of five years. All right. Let's be very clear about the very end of the relationship because people basically made shit up completely about that, saying someone dumped someone or did this or did that. 
first of all, what happened is none of anyone's fucking business. And the bottom line is that myself and my ex never disclosed that information, and we never will. Because it's none of anyone's fucking business, the truth of the matter behind everything that happened there. Alright? But there was a weird situation, because uh, we had already broken up in early 2017. Alright? We had. We had already broken up. And when we had broken up, we didn't make it public. Alright? But there was one particular day when I was streaming, I believe I was doing like a podcast. And I get a call, alright? The call is from my ex's job saying, your ex, you know, had a medical issue and we need you to come pick her up. Uh, at that point, my ex was in the process of moving out of the house. Like she had some of her stuff out already and she was staying somewhere else temporarily. By the time that I had gotten to her job, I had to pay for an Uber and everything. By the time that I got to her job, she was already at the hospital. So I took the car. She, I, by the way, I was still letting her drive my car to go, despite the fact that we were broken up. She was still driving my car. It was that nice of a guy. I go to the hospital to find out what the hell's actually going on, and I guess she had had a panic attack. They'd given her some kind of a pill. I don't even know what it was. Was it, was it an antidepressant? Was it, um... I don't even know, because I'm not involved anymore. You know, I, she's my ex. So all that being said, all right, when I came back home, she was all zonked out or whatever, and she's like, ah, you're going to go on your stream now and tell everyone about the story, right? I was like, of course I am, as long as it's okay with you. And she was like, yeah, go ahead. So I did. I went, I came back, I did a stream where I explained exactly what I just told you guys. So basically, the story ends and out. Only I had to spin it to not let you know that we were already broken up, okay? Um, and then it was actually over the course of the next week or two that she moved all her stuff out, and that was the end of our relationship. I, you know, that was it. And all I saw on the internet was slant Phil without permission, went online and disclosed a medical issue with his girlfriend slash fiance, because at the time we were, we were supposed to be engaged even though we had broken up. People thought we were still engaged. Um, and gave all her medical history to everyone on the internet and then said that he's not giving permission for her to ever have an ambulance come and pick her up ever again, that from now on, no, no one should ever call the emergency line, but instead they should just hand her a pill and leave her alone. Like, what the fuck? Where did you get that? from the story that I told. Like, that's not even close to what happened. The thing is, I know if this ever happens again, I'm gonna tell him, you are not allowed to bring her to the hospital. No, no, you get no permission to fucking do it. You can't give her a pill, you wanna give her a pill, give her a pill, and that's it, because you're just gonna waste our time again. Seriously, they just make shit up. Yeah, that's the other thing. So, I'm, I'm, what I, just so you guys know, I have a list. I actually have a list of things that are common misconceptions that people slander about me. Demanded she never go to a hospital ever again, instead they just give her a pill and leave her where they found her. How could I have made that demand when we were broken up? All right, now moving on. All right, let's talk a little bit about Project 7. Because I hate to tell you guys this, but I've already addressed this before. Project <laughs> But what I've heard is that people say, to this day, say, well, Phil scammed his his friends, or he ripped off his friends and never paid them for anything, and that's why they, they hate him to this day. Bullshit. That's complete and utter fucking bullshit. He was handsomely paid. Handsomely paid for all of that stuff. When we first started, he got paid... 50% of everything that we made money on. He made half, he got half of what I made. Later on, with, with my relationship with Machinima, my old YouTube partnership company, they started refusing to even give me stats on how much money I was making on my videos. That's how bad Machinima got near the end. They wouldn't even fucking come, all right? And a fair amount of money for you to come do this every week because we can't figure out the actual half anymore. It's not even possible to figure it out. Instead, let's just say, okay, let's make an arrangement where every time you come visit and we do this co-op work together, I'll pay you this amount of money. And that's what we did probably for the last two years that we did co-op. We had to do it that way. There was never discussion that people were going to get paid based on how the videos performed on YouTube. There was never discussion about how much money anyone's investing in the series. There was never discussion about anyone getting a paycheck out of it. Ever. That's, it never happened. Okay? Um. Alright. Let's continue. Um, I can't believe some of this shit. I really can't. Um, alright, let's continue here. I wanted to hit an 11-year-old girl. You're right, I just wanted to just, you know, punch a girl right in the fucking face. I cop up to that one. No! What the fuck are you talking about? I'm 11. You're 11? 
Yes. And your parents bought you a gaming PC? What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Probably because I'm part of wolf. You click on it, just so you know. You click on it, ah. Oh. Good, now I'm away from that annoying fucking bitch of a kid who I would have slapped in real fucking life if they talked to me like that. <laughs> I would have fucking pimp slapped that shit out of that. <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway. But there was a girl who I walked into a room and literally just became an insane brat insulting me and saying nasty shit to me. I didn't even say a word. And she was saying like nasty shit direct to me. I was like, damn, you know. That girl needs a fucking smack or something. I don't even remember exactly what I said, but it was a reactionary thing, basically saying, you know, she needs she, her, she needs a smack because if that was me in my day when I was growing up and I was a kid, if I acted like that, my parents would smack me right in the head. That's just how it was back then. Of course not. They would have banned me. But I didn't say that. It was an off-the-cuff comment. Your, your, your stupidity is that when I ask for help, that I go and I blow money on stuff and... That's not the case at all. Everything that I've ever asked you guys for has gone exactly towards what I've said it was going to be. All right. So the first first time around, we got to talk about this one because this one goes years back too. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Phil stole fan donations that went towards a Project 7 reboot. Every statement in that is false. All right. Besides maybe my name. Stole? I didn't steal anything. What they're talking about is a Patreon goal level that was hit for one month in the summer of like 2015. Maybe it was 2016, but I'm almost positive it was as far back as 2015. Not stole. It was raised v legitimately via a Patreon goal level. All right. Fan donations. They weren't fan donations. They were Patreon contributions. That's different. That went towards a Project 7 reboot. Wrong. It wasn't for a Project 7 reboot. It was for me to take some time out that month to do a Project 7 reboot trailer. Trailer. The whole Project 7 thing was complete nonsense. All right. But in regards to the, the recent things that have happened with me raising tax funds, there were two specific times. All right, when I needed to raise tax funds. Once was in the fall slash late 2017 because I needed to pay a state tax payment by the end of 2017 and then I had to pay a bunch of money in 2018 for state taxes, okay? I announced this dilemma of mine in November of 2017 on my Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day podcast. I did a Thanksgiving Day special podcast and I announced this problem to my viewing audience on Thanksgiving Day 2017. You can go back and watch it. It's still live over on my vlog vlogging channel, The King of Hate Vlogs, all right? Now, during 2017 was the year when early in the year I broke up with my ex and I started talking to and then dating my now wife, Kat, okay? Now, Kat didn't live around here and she had to visit me a couple times. I had to take time away from streaming and stuff to spend time with her. I didn't disclose that that was happening because I knew if I did, people would be trying to get up in our private shit. All right. But what people say to this day, Phil raised all that money for the taxes so he could secretly fly his new girlfriend across the country to spend time with him. Now let's look at the timeline. Well, the first time that Kat came to visit me was the summer of 2017. The second time she came to visit me was the fall, which I believe was October of 2017, because she actually helped me pick out my Halloween costume for the Halloween special that I did that year. I announced my financial dilemma about the state taxes in Thanksgiving of 2017. So obviously what Phil did is he announced it so he could raise funds, go back in time, and pay for the two visits beforehand. 
You fucking dumbasses. You you talk out of your fucking asses about this stuff and make the most crazy, controversial, insane theories that make no fucking sense. It's such a weird conspiracy. All right, here's a, here's a, a legit question. Someone tipped me a dollar and asked, did I get Almighty Tevin kicked off of Twitch TV? No. I wholeheartedly will 100% tell you to your face, look into the camera as I say it as well, in case someone said, oh, Phil wasn't looking to the camera. I didn't get Tevin banned from Twitch. I had nothing to do with it at all. Zero. I didn't even know about it until after the fact people came into my chat and told me. What happened is he pissed off people. Like, he, when you do stuff that not only negatively affects me, but affects other people, you piss off the wrong people, man. And you gotta understand that, like, people will eventually hold you accountable for shit that you've done. And he is the kind of guy that thinks that everything's fair game and he can bring up shit about, you know, my relatives and shit about other people, like my moderators and my viewers. And he thinks that it's all funny and it's not. It's fucked up that you would bring in personal shit like that. And I get the feeling that he rubbed the wrong person the wrong way. And they wrote Twitch management and said, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Did you watch five minutes of his stream to see what the fuck he's doing? And they got him shit canned. All right, I had nothing to do with it at all. I don't know if that's really the case. That's my speculation, but I have no truth um, about any of that, okay? <clears throat> oh, yeah, that never happened either. So, so Dark tipped me a dollar. He says, can you debunk... Uh, People saying that you leaked your ex-girlfriend's nude pictures on a, uh, on a video. That never happened. What happened was there was a picture of my ex-girlfriend. It wasn't a picture. It was a thumbnail. A thumbnail of a picture, I think. Now, by the way, this is from like, again, this is, you know, 2012, 2013, something like that. 100 years ago. And there was a little thumbnail somewhere on my desktop or, in a, no, it was in a folder. And I had been recording a video doing something else and apparently the thumbnail popped up. It wasn't a nude at all. It wasn't a nude at all. There's nothing nude whatsoever in the picture. It was a thumbnail and it was not a nude. But it was her like posing with her arm like this. So people assumed that it was a nude and started saying, oh, it's a nude, it's a nude. It wasn't a nude. If it was a nude, I wouldn't be on YouTube. I would have been banned from YouTube, stupid. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I think I've talked long enough. Um, I've had enough. <laughs> I got it off my chest. I do feel better. I hope that this cleared up a lot of misconceptions for a lot of people that they've had for over the years. Um, you've got your answers. Again, um, it's on you guys to believe me or not. And I know there's many people who won't and there's many people who will. And that's okay. It is what it is, you know? You can judge for yourself. But the bottom line is, for as much as you say, well, there's no evidence, Phil, of what you said, well, guess what? There's no evidence of any of the shit that these people say about me because it's not true. They will never show you a concrete lick of evidence because they can't because it doesn't exist. You know what I mean? If they did, they would show it, and then that would be it. If definitively I had done the horrible things, I would have been banned from YouTube, banned from Twitch, banned from Twitter, banned from the internet, banned from the earth, banned from the Milky Way, launched off into a black hole, shot across, you know, the old plane of existence and had all my molecules ripped apart at the seams because how could someone so horrible as me even be allowed to exist in this plane of existence, right? See what I mean? But none of that ever happened because it's all bullshit on my behalf and my expense so they can get clickbait and you fell for it if you believed any of that stuff and it sucks if you did you know i can't blame you for it especially now that there's so much stuff that goes on negative to about me uh in the last seven years that people just believe it is fact but the bottom line is none of it is true a lot of it's based on snippets of fact or things here or there but none of it is true and no one will ever show you evidence otherwise because it ain't true i presented you quite a bit of evidence to back up our claims as the detractor community. Now, Phil will never show you any evidence of anything going on in his life because he wants to keep duping his fans into giving him money. But other than that, this whole stream was to piggyback off of his hot viral tweet about pro Jared. And that 
is just sad. But to continue our list, we're going to look at one of the bigger issues in 2019 for Phil, and that is his mods and his genuine fans leaving him and leaking why. Thank you, Bully, for taking care of that. By the way, Dr. Bottom Line is, did you just remove the ban on Liquid Hindo? Because I didn't approve that. You realize I just saw that, right? Like, you just re removed... Why did you remove a ban on someone who I banned? Why did you do that? <laughs> you literally just got cut out red handy. No, now you try to reban them. That's not how it works. Now you have to explain to everyone what you just did and why you thought you could sneak that in. <laughs> everyone, you dude, you just got caught red handed with your hand in the cookie jar, dude. Like, one million percent caught out on banning someone that's permanently banned. So you better explain your your actions right now. <laughs> you got caught the fuck out, dude. One million percent caught out. Damn, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, you still haven't said anything. Still waiting on an answer. I asked a few months and they said, "Okay, it's okay. My bad." Uh, what? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think you're full of shit. I think you literally just got caught, dude. Seriously, I think you got caught the fuck out. <laughs> Every once in a while, someone who I permanently banned gets unbanned, and I wonder how. We just literally just saw it right there live. Oops. You're no longer a moderator, the bottom line is. Until you can actually explain your actions without making a bullshit on the stream, you're not a mod anymore. Boy, did he just get caught the fuck out, dude. I mean, wow. That was probably the biggest instance ever of catching someone red-handed doing something undermined behind my back. Because that's, that's the worst thing to me is, like, dishonesty. I hate dishonesty. I would rather if someone hates my guts tell me to my face than do stuff underhanded behind my back. You see what I'm saying? So, when someone does shit behind my back like that, that's the absolute worst thing you could do. Because I think that's a little shit kind of behavior. That's like if you're a real coward, you know, that's how you behave. To try but the thing is, a lot of people probably don't realize that. I guarantee you when he did it, he wasn't thinking that. It was, oh, how can I piss off Phil? No, he was like, oh, I want to get my friend back in the chat. Let me try to sneak it in. You know, he doesn't think, oh yeah, so here's Phil, someone with a history of people backstabbing him constantly. Let's, uh, let's just backstab him again to get my friend in there. He probably didn't think about that, you know? Oh, so there you go. So the bottom line is just literally admitted that he's an asshole. He literally publicly just admitted in the stream chat that he's an asshole and he was underhandedly trying to hurt me purposely behind my back. He just admitted it. Okay. Oh, you, oh you're right. You will take the ban. You're absolutely right. You will take the ban. You'll take the ban hard right in your fucking ass. Get the fuck out. You're supposed to be someone I trust and you're going to be a dickhead and go behind my back and hurt me and assault me. Get the fuck out. <laughs> You'll take the ban real hard right up the, the right of the pooper, buddy. Goodbye and good riddance. The Chonkla, or the bottom line, as he was known at the time, wasn't the only mod that left. Swag and Zimland Dingo also left, leaving Phil's mod cupboard very bare. Next up on this list is number six, mandatory contributions. I 
can't wait for the money. I'm just going to ban. Big ups to Actually Over There on Kiwi Farms for all of those lovely bugles throughout the begging year that was 2019 for DSP. And I hope you appreciated that original song made by yours truly. But moving on to number five. My taxes. It's the $17,000 right. So here's the good going. news. All right. I misunderstood how a lot of the tax stuff worked. I thought that if I didn't pay my taxes by April 15th, that I was going to have a ridiculous amount of late fees, a ridiculous amount of interest, and like it was going to destroy me. Like Not only would I owe what I owe for my regular taxes for the year, but also then there would be a ton of extra shit on top of it. Let me add these two numbers quickly. Hold on, everybody. Let me get my calculator out. So this plus this. Okay. All right, so factoring in all things and what I already have to put towards it, the, the net amount that I still am going to owe 
to the government. All right. $17,161. Holy shit! Oh, fuck! Ouch. That is horrible, right? That's fucking insane amount of money. Yeah. That's what they're telling me I owe by mid-April. Okay? That is bad. All right? But! But! But, 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 but. We don't have to be disheartened yet. Okay? Not yet. Because there's some good news. All right? Here's what my tax guy told me. Okay? He said, the good news is that he works with the government all the time. And he is very confident. All right? Very confident that if I can raise a certain amount of money by mid-April and put it to towards this, that he's confident that he can take the rest of, of the, what I owe and he can negotiate it into a payment plan. Let's just $5,000. Let's say I can raise $5,000 between now and mid-April to put towards this total of 17 grand that I still owe, okay? So then he'll take the remaining money and figure it out, divide it by 24 or whatever, and say, okay, there's a monthly payment of this. But it's not guaranteed. Like, he's basically saying he's going to try to get me the best terms possible, but he can't do that until we see actually how much I have to put towards the taxes. You see what I mean? Like, once he has an amount, I say, okay, this is what you owe. I'll go to the federal government. I'll tell them the situation, and I'll, I'll put you on a direct program where every month they basically take it right out of your bank account. And as long as you do that and you agree to this, these terms, there's like no fees, no interest. You're not going to get destroyed. It's just going to be a set payment plan for, uh, you know, a set amount of, uh, of time. Okay. Now, I'm going to be very honest with everyone here. Just being very honest with all of you. Okay. So, just being very honest here, you know, the payment plan might not work. I need to raise as much as I can by April 15th. The more I raise, the better the situation for me. Okay, so if I can raise, you know, half of what I owe, all right, and and have that to pay towards it, I gotta sell my house. There's nothing I can do about it. It's the only way I can make the money, all right. Um, but what I'm hoping is that you know, with this marathon on Saturday, you know, where we're trying to raise many tips for this situation, that I can raise enough to make a big dent in this tax total. All right, get it down as much as I can, and that he can get me on a payment plan that's affordable for me. New phase of creation, you obviously have not listened to a word that I fucking said. I said that the total that I just told all of you is after any money I have left over from Emerald 7. People are like, you do piss me off when you start. I just explained it, and now you act like I never said it, and then people will have weird conspiracy theories about where the money went. Okay, so stop it. Listen. Listen the fuck up. Jesus Christ. Okay. Now. Jesus. So, here's the deal. I think it's time, you know, basically, now that I know what I owe, I know what I'm up against. In rea If I can raise around $17,000, boom, I'm actually good. Like, that would put me in a good position. I'd be like, wow, I raised the money. The taxes aren't even an issue for this year. Now I can just go on business as usual and not have to worry about it at all. Realistically, do I see myself raising $17,000 in three weeks? No. <laughs> just being very honest with all of you. All right? Being very, very honest with all of you, I don't foresee this happening whatsoever. Okay? I don't. Um, what I'm hoping is that with Sekiro right here around the corner, which is going to bring out a lot of people who normally wouldn't come by, um, with the marathon on Saturday, which I know a lot of people are going to probably come out and hopefully be generous and help out with tips, and with my birthday week coming up, the first week of April is actually my birthday on the 6th. And, you know, as I usually do, like last year, I'll have decorations and stuff. I'll try to hype it up. Birthday week fun and stuff. Hopefully some people will be generous and will will raise as much as I possibly humanly can. All right. And go from there. You know, if I can raise a big amount of money and put it towards the taxes, I think I'll at least be in a, a good or better position than originally I had imagined. Obviously, the goal here is to be in a position that I can afford where I'm not, you know, oh my God, there's no way to pay bills and there's no way to pay what I owe, so I have to sell my house, all right? I don't want to be in that position, okay? Okay, so, yeah, some people are saying you should just do it. Do a $17,000 tips bar. <laughs> well, I'm not going to have a tips bar. 
but I definitely will have a running tally of what I've raised. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, all right? You know, like I, I told you guys, this Saturday is basically make or break for me, and it's true. You know, I need to raise a significant amount of stuff this coming Saturday um, in the hopes that I can make a giant dent in what I owe and, you know, and go from there. So, we'll see how it goes, okay? All right, so, whew, that is it. That's the deal for now, okay? Um... And we'll see how this ha how it works. Well, I, you know, I'm, I am feeling positive for Sekiro tomorrow and the marathon on Saturday, and of course this coming week we're gonna have Sekiro paired with MLB, um, and a lot of fun stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so that's the deal. So anyway, in summary, I owe just over seventeen thousand dollars in taxes still to the government. And I need to raise as many funds as possible before the middle of April in order to put towards said taxes, okay? The more I raise, the better. Even if I can't raise the full amount, the more I raise, the better situation it's going to put me in when I go to the government and say, here's what I have, please put me on a payment plan for the rest of it. My tax guy is very confident that as long as I can raise a significant amount of money, uh, you know, between now and mid-April to put towards this, that we'll be able to get onto this payment plan, all right? So that's the deal, and that's why, you know, you don't have to feel dis discouraged or disheartened here. You don't, because it's not like I absolutely 100% have to raise the full amount in these three weeks that I have, okay? It would be amazing if I could, and I'm certainly not saying, oh my God, you know, we don't, you know, wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. I mean, obviously, yes, if I could raise that full amount, boom, put it right towards it, holy shit, that would basically make my, the rest of my year be so much better and I have to constantly be worrying about this shit, okay? But the but the the bottom line is, you know, in reality, I'm pretty sure we all know I'm not raising that much. You know what I mean? Um so we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens with Sekiro. Let's see what happens with the marathon on Saturday. Let's see what happens with my birthday week and let's hope for the best and hopefully, you know, this can turn into something positive and you know with between what I can actually realistically raise and everything things work out well okay in addition to that my trip to Connecticut is set it's gonna be the second week of April I'm not giving you specific dates or anything yet I will as we get closer to it but it's basically looking like I'm gonna be here my entire birthday week basically busting my butt putting out fun streams for all of you and trying to raise as much as possible before I am out of here to go visit my parents in Connecticut okay Fair enough. Okay. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Now, I, okay. DSP's biggest fan, who obviously is a troll in the stream chat, says, didn't you get $250 in tips last night? What does that have to do with anything? Like, what is what is your actual point? And this is what I mean. You get people like, like New Face of Creation who say, what happened to the money from April 7? And you get this guy. What happened to the $250 you raised last night? Where do you think it went? But what I'm hoping is that, like I said, we'll get to a situation here where we, you know, I can raise enough to at least get either get on the payment plan or pay off everything if I can, which I doubt's gonna happen. But you know, trying to be, be positive and realistic here, and get to a situation, um. Who, where it's not just constant worrying about the next thing, you know? So, there you go. Um. Phil failed in reaching his goal. However, his mom later on bailed him out during that birthday week. But we'll get to that one soon. Earlier this year, though, Phil had a chance to go on an interview with another internet celebrity. And that was Jeremy of the, the many, quartering that strongly and dislike together you. the super to the gout brothers him. went on a I'm circle jerk fest of the specifics of why you may love him or why you may hate him i asked you the viewer for some interview questions i asked as many as i reasonably could i think the interview i hope the interview will be entertaining to you i think phil is a pretty interesting story. He seems to me to be a relatively humble man, a man willing to accept he's made mistakes in the past, 
but also a man that has Phil has a gouty fat butt. Um, and to those that Jeremy, not known to do much research for any of his interviews, made a video about. Hard? The cancel culture times. surrounding I DSP. Questions that were submitted and by you. DSP uh, took it as a to fair video. Of his bank the two eventually no. came to terms not, and scheduled out an interview. Law enforcement. And I, oh boy, I, one, I could did it ever suck. That. Jeremy didn't do but his two, research. I would never get and Phil was softballed interview. several questions. So I did the best I could. And anything I that came remotely it. close to being a troll question. Okay. Was scrutinized have, by Phil with just Jeremy nodding and agreeing. Question. There were plenty okay. of sniffs, <laughs> plenty right. of snorts, and Where did the Phil go? looking very uncomfortable. Um, I don't like that video I made last week. That was the first video I ever made about you, even though I've known about you for many years. It, I, I'm not like a, as you might call it, a detractor channel. Um, I, I no, not. absolutely not. That's that's honestly one of the reasons why when I saw the video, I was like, this guy is not someone who constantly rags on me. He, you know, I watched the video. Yeah, you took some some shots at me. Everyone has, right? Yeah, so yeah. it didn't offend me, and I was like, you were actually being honest and upfront, and you were analyzing it from kind of a third party standpoint that was fair about these asshole independent media bullshit, you know, trying to attack me. And I was like, this guy actually is like legit. Like this is a, a fair video about me. Out of all the stuff that gets made about me, <laughs> very rarely do I get a fair video made about me. So that's why I kind yeah. of stood out. Yeah, I thought it was funny that, um, you know, I, I when <clears throat> when I saw those articles came out, it was like, oh, uh, DSP says some racist shit, and then they they post to like videos from two years ago or something like that, um, of you ba essentially doing like Ching Chong Bing Bong, which is by the way done by every mainstream media, <laughs> you know, person in the last ten years, so. You know, it's not like you were saying anything in particular, you know, anything crazy offensive or anything like that. Um, and, and a lot of these outlets, <laughs> as you saw in the video, they were unaware of your uncancel on your uncancel ability. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll start with, you know, like, I don't want to just jump right in and with some like questions are going to put you on guard or whatever. So maybe some like reasonable questions because to be honest with you it might surprise you like most most of my viewers are not people that are used like to be honest most people that replied to those threads were like ask genuine questions as you saw the list you're like oh these aren't that bad yeah you know um so what are your plans for for post youtube so have you given any thought to like you know what what the fuck am i going to do after all this or you know how does that thought process go yeah you know when i first of all when i started i never wanted to do this for a living at all this was only i wanted to do this for a hobby and then i lost my full-time job out of nowhere i got laid off blindsided they actually like went nuts on the ads and i made like a ton of money in a couple of months just like one of my first hobbies. Yeah. But anyway, to get back to, back, get back to your original question, like, I never planned on doing this for, to make any money. Like, it just I fell in my lap out of nowhere overnight. And I was like, oh, crap, this is amazing. I'm making more money now than I ever did at my office job, you yeah. know, for five years that I was working there. They laid me off, and now I'm making, like, so much more money. It's crazy. Of course, we all know that bubble didn't last. It burst, and, right. you know, now everything is so bad on YouTube. So I don't want to, like, ever say that in my life I would quit doing this outright, but it's yeah. pretty – pretty unrealistic to expect that you could ever do this your whole life i know you must know you're not an idiot you must know that some people are hate watching you and so you interact with people or whatever the case may be you know where do you think you know how does that work into your your live stream you know interacting with these these people that are just always in your orbit you know just to shit on you we're just yeah. here to take a big dump on everybody we don't care what you do or what it is but we have to find the faults and destroy you and that's they get Jolly's doing that. I used to heavily police my comments on my videos, heavily police them to the point where people were like, I don't like watching Phil's videos because I can't comment. When I comment, 
everything seems like it's super policed and commented on there. At one point, I just let it go. And what I noticed systematically is over the years, more toxic people came in, more stuff just kept crapping on the videos, crapping on the videos. Some people say, don't acknowledge it at all. But the thing is, if a lot of people are doing it and you don't acknowledge it at all, now it's like they're not going to come back. And when you allow that that thing to have power, you know what I mean? It gets even worse. And at the same time, if you don't acknowledge it at all, that's a group of people that, number one, could be contributing and they're not. Several channels that basically are 100% dedicated to making mod, and you've got a few of them too. Oh, so, yeah. Well, how do you approach that type of content now? What, what do you think of these dedicated channels that are basically just memeing on you? See, I don't... Here's the thing. Again, I'm different now than I used to be. When I was a, a full-time YouTuber, I was, like, really pissed off about it. And I would yeah. call these channels out. They're stealing my content. I wish I could take them down, blah, blah, blah. I'm not even like that anymore. Don't try to actually, like, hurt myself or my livelihood or my family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because sadly, there's people who do take it that far, and I hate to say it, but the people who make those channels don't realize that what they're doing is kind of putting the ammo into a group of people who aren't like them. You know, those those guys, they're doing it for laughs. They're doing it to make fun of me and to make some some <coughs> popularity, get popularity by my, on my expense, right? Yeah. La you know, they're, they're not laughing with me. They're laughing at me, but they get a rise. They make some money doing it. Whatever. It's it's fine. I don't care about that. What I care about is now the person who watches all their content comes after me and my family personally which has happened many times yeah. um and that's what i'm worried about like i don't care if someone makes a video this is how you don't play here's a montage of phil sucking at dark souls big deal but you make yeah. a video that says yeah. phil is 100 percent a scammer and he regularly every day he he steals money from his viewers by lying to them constantly and he's a really dishonest disgusting person and he really shouldn't exist you're going to get people who are going to like in their head not understand that that's a video to make fun of me they think this is a call to action and now they think that they have to do everything they possibly can to hurt someone like me me or someone like me um some of the stuff that's happened you know i you wouldn't even believe some of the stuff that well, people tried to do i mean do i've had it all scenes. too i've had swattings <laughs> i've had uh, to deal with a lot of that bullshit too people calling my fucking mom who doesn't even know how to use facebook or whatever right you know people people called my my mother-in-law and, to and like told her that I was a neo-Nazi, you know, and I said I wouldn't ask any questions about it specifically, but that is the biggest issue with your detractors is the money. Initially, they'll tell you it's money, but then if you kind of debunk what they're talking about, oh, that didn't really happen. Here's what really happened. Oh, well, didn't you also know that Phil did this and this and this and this and this yeah, and this and this? Yeah. You know, you know what the big one that came up with the most uh, was this cat thing. Let's stop it right there. The rest of the interview was extremely boring, talking about gout, victim blaming, and various other normal DSP topics. But let's talk about this cat thing. In early August, Phil decided to give out some positive news in that things in the stream were going to change from this great big reveal coming up during his Mario 64 marathon. And well, what he did reveal was a tip skull of a thousand dollars with secondary tip skull of two thousand dollars that was forgotten about however jasper the two thousand dollar cat was revealed someone who i'm going to, uh, to introduce you to today who has been a part of our lives for quite some time, in fact, all right? And it's funny because we've, with all the stuff that we've had to do, we've had to keep a lot of stuff private. Come on up here. Here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to our pet. Oh, he's playing with this. Oh, here we go. Here's our pet. <laughs> Yeah, here we go. Perfect. <laughs> this is Jasper, ladies and gentlemen. Jasper the cat. Arr, get that twisty. His favorite toy is these twisty things that we bought for him. These little strands. So here's the funny thing. He grabbed it. Here's the funny thing. He's declawed in the front.
an amazing cat. Like I said, he's super friendly. He's such a nice cat, and no one wanted to adopt him because he was declaw. Um, yeah, so just a Jasper Cam, right? So that would be cool, right? And that's what I, I was thinking about all this in my head, and really the truth of the matter is we wanted to kind of reveal him for a long time now, but with all the stuff that's been going on in our lives, personally, we just didn't, we wanted to wait for the right time. All right, and we just felt now is kind of the right time because I'm doing so many chill streams now that it made sense. Here, come on, come up here again, Jasper. Come up here. Here he comes. <laughs> See, Jasper doesn't know that there's a camera here, so he doesn't know to look at you guys. Ah. Yeah, play with that twist. We got a bunch of toys and stuff that I could bring in here to play with him during the chill streams at night, too, you know? <laughs> One thing he really likes to do, he likes to knead stuff with his hands. So he's kneading, right now he's kneading the, the love seat with his hands. Ah! <laughs> More than likely, if you're not really hanging out with him that much, and then you run into him in the house, he'll say, meow! Jasper hasn't really enhanced the streams at all. Most of the time he's sleeping in the office. Cat's stable, if you will. Or he's downstairs spending time with Cat instead of Phil. Phil used this whole reveal to go ahead and scam his fans once again, causing fans and mods to finally leave Phil streams. Number two on this list happened very recently, and I was lucky enough to have one of my fantastic field agents provide me with the information, and we found out that the foreclosure saga has finally begun. This is a situation where once again, I've done absolutely nothing wrong whatsoever and I'm getting punished like, like I did, you know? This is a legitimate court case in which Phil is on the hook for quite a bit of money, upwards of $101,000, because he hasn't yet to pay for his condo in Connecticut that he left abandoned. He didn't short sell it, he didn't take a loss, because his ego would have taken a massive hit. Haha, <laughs> whoops. That's gonna be my new catchphrase. Ha ha, whoops. And we all know what that's from. <laughs> that's my new catchphrase. Speaking of Phil's ego, he wanted to act like a big boy, mature adult this year. And it leads us to our number one spot. DSP gets married. This wedding happened after months of Phil saying that they didn't have the money to get married, let alone engaged, which I thought was going to happen on this Connecticut trip where they had to go and I'm meet sorry, his so dying parents. There's but no he pulled a fast way. one and just jumped the shark and got married. And luckily for us, Mr. Huthstuff has LSB's and Tevin's reactions. Bruh, it's real? Hey, God. I, I'm either getting clowned really fucking hard. I fucking call. I fucking called it. You you gotta be fucking kidding me. I fucking called it. I called it that this fucking trip was gonna be money to buy a ring and a honeymoon. No fucking way. You goddamn pig.
Surprise, we got married. It was a tiny ceremony and my suit is 10 years old, but we are so happy. He went back to Connecticut to get a suit. Hang on. I gotta, I gotta see the picture. Oh my god, there's a picture of Cat in a wedding dress! Oh my god, this is fucking real! It's fucking real! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Unfucking believable! Look how awkward she looks in that dress! Oh my god! Fucking called it! You guys paid for that wedding dress. Not you guys, but Phil, your, Phil's audience paid for this fucking wedding dress. They paid for the dress, they paid for the rings. Oh uh, guys, this trip is gonna be 100% paid for by my parents. Fuck you! You guys paid for a suit, you guys paid for a dress, you guys paid for rings. I fucking called this months ago when he said, oh, my fucking parents are dying. Oh my god. Hey, uh, there's a, is there a way for me to interact with this? No, it won't let me click on the play button. What does it look like off screen? What is with her nails? Do you guys see this? She's got four white nails and one golden nail. Oh my god. What is this? Holy shit. It was planned from the beginning. It was so his parents could be there for the wedding. Yeah. I didn't think that far ahead, but he definitely... Gold dust nail. Yeah, that's perfect. I was going to make a week in DSP and just be like, oh, Phil put this awkward Instagram picture out. Phil put this other awkward Instagram picture out. Daki, you called the Instagram announcement? Damn. Yeah, you, I, I mean, I, I definitely was calling that this trip is to go and get married or at least go and get engaged. Holy shit. It passed through so Wait, DSP got married. <laughs> he just posted he got married? And had Yo, a he memed us the fuck out. The skeleton oh, that's fucked up, dude. Watched from afar in oh, YouTube, YouTube chat is gonna love that. Passed through the young child and I gotta go through so much so much effort. Oh no, I'm tripping. I already got his tweet open. Was that why he had the question mark tweet? Because he was asking Cat to marry him? Dark splinters Surprise, we got married. It was a tiny ceremony and my suit is 10 years old, but we are so happy. Full story coming this weekend. Wow. I guess it's him lying to his viewers. Over the body oh, she really... The I can't even say what I think she looked like on his website. Very pleased. I'm going to be going to Band but World. I'm not saying anything. King had once again Oof. underestimated his Akazi foe. And when the Great One <laughs> sensed that the Skeleton King was no longer watching, the illusion was lifted, and the child was smiling. <laughs> the Great One, though, was very sad. Oh, oh man. I can't believe this is a thing. This is so nice. This is such a meme. Time together, and he would not see his beloved... Ah, uh, this changes everything. Yo, this dude, did he lie about his parents almost dying to get married? What is that? Who does this? I have no money. I don't have money to do anything. And then he tells us he wore a suit from 10 years ago. He looked like Sargon, probably. I want to see your wrist in that suit, dog. Oh, his hand looks really old, too. Oh, oh. <laughs> The skeleton king <laughs> that victory finally lay within his grasp would again descend on oh, him man. to claim his 
And it's funny because something I wanted to do on YouTube if I streamed again was kind of about her moving in. Like what he was saying, what he was saying way, way before. Well, no, I guess right before she actually did. This dude. Oh, man. That is such a big meme. How, how was anybody going to feel about something like that? I lied about taxes. Frame trapped you on a line about my parents dying. And then hit you with a parry. And then parried into getting married. What are you even supposed to think? Wow, when is the next time we fucking see Doc? Shit, it's Wednesday. The next time we see this dude is gonna be Thursday, bruh. Oh man, the internet is gonna. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking meme oh dog Twenty nineteen was an absolute crazy year in the DSP cinematic universe. 2020 will only be more exciting. Big ups to all of those agents out there that helped me along with this video. It's been a fantastic year and I can't wait to do more in 2020. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from all of us here at the DIA.